This afternoon, there are long queues at SIM card registration centers across the country as the July 31 deadline given by the Communications Ministry approaches. Now, individuals who fail to register their SIM cards risk being removed from the communications network. There have been calls for an extension, but there have been at least two extensions already. Well, Joy Business understands the Communications Minister will be engaging key stakeholders and telecom firms on whether or not to extend. We will be speaking with Country Coordinator of Cast International, Apia Kusia Dumako. First, Joy News' Michael Ashale has been touring some registration centers. The end, they say I spied. So I registered the Tigo, I registered like two weeks, last two weeks. I used the same Ghana card to register it. But you yeah, about the MTN, they say I spied. I think the expiry date is supposed to be on the back, did this card um, on, on, on the card. This card I did you, you did the card for 250 Ghana cities, but it's been difficult May, to... to okay. Ashashi, Ashashi, 2.5. Three years. Uh, three years can soon, yeah. Uh, I, why did they expire? Can I speak, uh, Yeah, yeah you, I mean, feel free. Mm, uh, sir, I'm uh, me, 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 I registered at, at far back? Uh, yeah, just we, we, we go here. Uh, 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 no, we go here first. Um, no, no, just down here. Then we direct right from here. So, uh, since uh, uh, about uh, uh, two months ago. Two months? Mm. You've been trying to rectify the error on it. What was what, the particular error on it? Is it your name or date of birth? The name. Uh, the name has changed. Okay. Uh, so from what to what? From Okwasi uh, uh, to Dabi. Wow. Uh. Okay. So his his name has changed. That that only means that you've not been able to do your SIM card re-registration. No, I couldn't do it because. Of and the deadline is fast approaching. Yes, that's why I've come. How, how does that make you feel that on Monday your SIM card is going to be cancelled? Uh, I'm I'm very very sorry. If my, my, uh, no, uh, the SIM card is cancelled, I will not be happy. Mm. Sure. And so people over there are having challenges securing their Ghana card, which is essential for the SIM card registration. On Zoom with us this afternoon, Apia Kusiadumaku, who is country coordinator of CAST International, uh, if you could join us this afternoon. So those long queues really tell that a huge number of people have still not registered their SIM cards, and that makes your call for an extension very necessary, sir. Yes, uh, a lot of Ghanaians have not been able to register their SIM card through the fault of no uh, them. And I think that uh, a call for government to extend the registration deadline, I don't think in all honesty is a misplaced call. I think government, Ministry of Communication, will need to heed to the call of the people and do so. The reason being that some people, like the picture, the story that you just read, this old man must be in his late 80s or 70s. He's trying to register his, his, his SIM card, but he's been told that there is an error on the card. And this error, there's the whole Ghana, there's only one place in Ghana where this error is fixed. That is the NIA head office in Accra. I've met people who have come all the way from San Dema, Savalugu, Nonton, Kumase, and these are old age people just coming to correct the, uh, the error they have on their card. One lady got to Accra and she was told that the, she needs to go and gazette her name before she could be allowed to do that. Currently, if you go to the gazette place, you are told that it will take six weeks before the gazette will be published. That means that 
you can't get your name corrected within the next two days, one week or two, as it happens in the normal gazette. And these are some of the logistic constraints that we have. And I think, uh, in all honesty and fairness, uh, Ghanaian deserve a better I mean, option. And we require and request that the Ministry of Communication extend the deadline to the end of December 31st. But in saying, in extending it to December 31st, we don't want to come to the level whereby people would come back again to say that we extended it at the last minute. They are also coming back again for another extension. So in our letter to the ministry, we said that, look, extend the mass registration to the end of August. And then from September, you come with a limited feature, limited uh, constraints on people's SIM card. So for all on use on registered SIM card, from 1st of September, what it could mean is that there must be a limit on how much an unregistered SIM card can send in a day. Let's say a minute you can send or receive a maximum of 100 Ghana cities on your SIM card from 1st of September. And then from 1st of October, then the, the limit also then comes onto your uh, your uh, the other other features of your right. call. So from 1st of October, it could be that I think I have a copy of the letter. So from 1st October, if you have not registered your phone, then there should be no voice call on all on non-registered SIM card. And then from 1st November, if you haven't registered your SIM card, then there should be no access to data. And then from 1st December, if you have not registered your phone, your SIM card, then there should be no access to mobile. And then from, from January 1st, maybe government can consider to us. Okay. Deactivate but, the but I guess the I, I guess the the frustration for the government is that uh, this uh, deadline has been extended a couple of times already, and that frustrates its agenda as well. Yes, but then you know that registering your SIM card is not just as presenting your money or your body to any SIM registration desk to be able to register. There is a condition precedent. You must get a valid national ID. Mm. And if you don't have the card, you will not be able to register. As of now, we are, we've been informed that more than 800,000 cards have been issued, but then uh, they have not been able to deliver it to those who, are, uh, who it belongs to them. And there are others who also have some legitimate challenges in terms of their names. Some of them are also being cut off from the they are part of the country, it's also inaccessible. All these things, we've not been able to address this logistic constraint. And yet, we still want to go about our deadline and let us know that the deadline was not delivered from heaven to us. It was set by human beings. And then when human beings have got constraints, I don't think it is uh, something strange to ask for an extension uh, in times like this. Well, well, to be fair, there have been challenges as well. So it's not that uh, that customers are deliberately, or, or most of them are deliberately not uh, trying to uh, get their SIM cards registered. Like you say, there have been challenges. So you think that this phased approach that you suggest will be effective? Yes. I mean, the phased approach, starting from 1st of October, where if you have not registered your SIM card, you, you, you don't have access to data. And then November to, if not, uh, if not registered, you don't have access to uh, Momo. And then December to, if not registered, you don't have access to voice call. And then gradually by January 1st, all unregistered SIM card then can be taken off from the same grade. That is, that is a better approach in ensuring that mm. everybody gets his or her SIM card registered. All right, uh, Apia Kusia Dumako, uh, country coordinator for CAS International, grateful you could join us. While well, mobile money agents have joined calls for extension of uh, the deadline, in a release, the association said uh, management wishes to appeal to government and the Ministry of Communications and Digitalization to, in the interest of the gains made in the communications industry, consider extending the deadline. The association has since endorsed this policy of government due to its positive impact on our businesses by helping care fraud. 
as business people in the industry. It will be very detrimental to our businesses and the industry in general should government pursue the 31st July 2022 deadline since many Ghanaians running into several millions are yet to be registered and issued the Ghanaian identification card. The business is already struggling with the impact of e-levy and this blockade, uh, blockage will only uh, not affect us but the Ghanaian populace. So that's uh, a statement from the Mobile Money Agents Association. So some business owners and customers of telcos are also calling for extension of the SIM card registration. James Eshen hits the streets. Affect everyone because it's not everyone that has the Ghana card. And mostly to people who are, you are transaction business with them, some are outside Accra and they cannot come to Accra to come for their money. So I wish uh, there will be a process that they will do some extension or those who don't have the NIA card. And even some people have gone to register, which they have not received their card, and even they have the slip. So if there will be other means for them to link their uh, SIM card with the slip that they have, that would be better. I said, I have to say, I have to say, I have to say, I have to say, I recently registered for the Ghana card for my mom. It's very hectic registering for the SIM card. The Minister of Communications should extend the deadline. If it's not being extended, we may have no option than to demonstrate. It's going to affect me, but it's not going to affect me alone. Actually, this the Ghana card they want us to do. If possible, if they can give us a little break of time for us to make our own Ghana card, because I believe others have gotten their own. If they can give us a little time to take it, because this Monday or the month Friday they say they're going to lock it out. It's going to affect we or the the videos here and it's going to affect us a lot because we are more doing business online so please if they can give us a little break for it and because um ga um same day in your chemoa i said they would say it's um untime in your call obin frail you can access the internet untime and your momo transactions it's a better it's like you are going back to the old olden days uh -huh. If SIM cards are deactivated, it will take us back. Extension should be the option for now because sometimes you face problems using the Ghana card to register for the SIM card. There shouldn't be timeline for this at all. This was signed call back to last time I work. Two days I couldn't do it because any pair of it also. So we definitely need an extension. And I did cry and yeah, I say, you know, uh my timeline. It's supposed to be lifetime. It do baby and I'm up to put two measures together. A beer from this time on, Untimi as a Simomo and no better compare you in Panama and I. A beer from this time on, Untimi, the access to the internet. Oh, but total cut of the MYM. Okay, um, say a Juma, you know, we want more bar on Kuta, um, physical cash. Our demand, we do our what came now, or copy. Our job demands mobile money transactions, so if SIM cards are deactivated, it will cause a big problem for businesses. Well, so we are just two to three days to the end of this month, which is the deadline of the SIM card registration. Engaging the business folks, we have been told they want extension, probably till the end of the month. Some are also saying if there is no extension, there would be some sort of demonstration. But from the Ministry of Communication, they are looking forward to engage other stakeholders with respect to whether or not they would extend the registration deadline. For Joy Business, James Eshen. Now, Finance Minister Ken Ufoyata has indicated that government will consider reviewing some exemptions under the e-levy rather than scrap the tax. There have been calls for the tax to be abolished due to the current hardship and challenges with mobilization. 
The finance minister reacted to that on PM Express Business Edition. It's a no-no. We have to pursue it because it's an important tax handle um, that will enable all of us to contribute in one fell swoop and has the capacity of a compliance and once the leakages and exemptions are taken care of. Um, that then brings in the type of resources that we need. George, nobody likes to pay taxes and when it comes to a tax system that you may not be able to dodge you know, or avoid, uh, it becomes you know, a little intimidating or you might feel that the coerciveness of the state. Uh, but truly the country has to be run with taxes. What are the important tax handles that you can have? And I, I believe that e-levy is one of them um, going forward. The country is going to continue to be digitalized. Use of currency is going to be minimized or minimized over time. Uh, and so this is what then will capture all of us in a bucket uh, in which we can then develop and transform our country. But mobilization is not doing well. I mean, you did a projection and right. in terms of collection is not doing well. Do you That's think correct. that that should influence any adjustment going forward? Um, adjustment, I mean, in the sense of um, um, the assumptions that we gave, um, to really look at them and, um, and really um, eliminate, you know, as many of the assumptions as possible, in line with our exemptions bill that has now, you know, been passed by Parliament. Um, and that's key. I mean, we, we need to get all of us contributing to it. Uh, and once we do that, uh, we should be able to move this transformation agenda forward. It's called to also look at the rate as well. Is that something that will be on the table? We looked at the rate at the beginning, went through the country, brought it down to 1.5. Now let's look at the assumptions first, mm -hmm. and then we will then titrate if anything else has to be done. 0 0.5? I don't know where the number emanated from, but everybody seems to have it on their lips. Yeah. Um, no, I think the key issue is really the issue of merchant to merchant, paying through Ghana.gov, agent to agent, uh, the, the, the banking systems, exemptions, etc. Uh, once that is thoroughly examined and we can figure out um, exactly what we can get from that, then we can look at other while well, the finance minister has assured he's fully committed to leading government's team to secure a good program with the IMF, the minister's commitment has been questioned after he earlier ruled out seeking a program with the fund. Mr. Friata insists the previous stance was based on data available at the time. A good program really is a program um, that leads to um, structures that we put in place so that we never return to this uh, and give ourselves the necessary buffers in the event of these, you know, I guess literally apocalyptic events that have occurred in the world. Um, how strong would you be? If you look at our inflation, for example, um, is that high because our import content is so high? Mm. And this is what we need to fight against. So the um, existence of the AFCFTA here, I think gives us a platform to be a continental hub for a lot of things and therefore you can see what's happening in the automobile industry. Um, I think we are looking <coughs> at a financial services hub um, here. Um, in terms of technology and IT um, for Twitter, Amazon, uh, Microsoft and, and co um, to want to be located here themselves, I think Ghana should become the plug and play place for technology and that then opens us up just for immense capacity for industrialization, technology, services, etc. Um, so it's an exciting period um, to reboot, to recalibrate. Um, and you know, in the heat of COVID was when the president um, pushed us mm -hmm. um, to come up with the Ghana Cares Program or Batampa Program. And so far, they are targeting areas such as uh, rice, poultry, tomatoes, etc., to make sure that we are, you know, we have food security and be able to export and turn these uh, into agribusinesses around around the country. Um, so I think it also brings a certain amount of, um, um, I guess, deep thinking for Ghanaians ourselves um, to really sit back and say, 
are we going to make ourselves subject to these, you know, constant external shocks or not? And it's a time to stop importing and it's a time to start manufacturing. You're watching the marketplace. Now, the real estate industry in Ghana has gained massive attention as many seek to have a roof over their heads. But what is pricing like when it comes to building materials? Well, on Shopping List today, we take you to Newtown to gauge prices to enable you to draw an accurate budget for your project. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Joy Business Shopping List. I'm sure you're expecting to see tomatoes, pepper and some other foodstuffs. Well, sorry to disappoint you because today we want to take a look at the prices of some building materials we have on the market. So if you're an individual, a real estate agent or you are into... is a shop attendant here at Jane Lisa Enterprise, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and he's going to help us with the prices. Abraham, let's start with the cement. Okay, the cement is 62 cities. Okay. At first, it was 50 cities. It came to 55. Last month, it was 60 cities, okay. but now it's 62 cities. All right. And for the POP cement, this POP cement, at first, it was 60 cities, but now it's 80 cities. Yeah, and this tau cement, we have Deluxe and we have Permafex. The Permafex, it was 20 cities, but now it's 22 cities. And for the Deluxe, 24 cities, but now it was 22 cities, but now it's 24 cities. The roofing nail is now it's eight cities. At first it was six cities, but now it's eight cities. That's for a pound. pound. For one pound. Okay. Oh. This two and a half nails. And this three inches. And this four inches. And this one too is two inches. At first it was five cities a pound for one pound. But now it's seven cities. This one, one, yes. This also seven cities. At first it was five cities. But now it's seven cities. And this one and a half inch. One pound is eight cities. At first it was six cities. This Leland, 20 liters. At first it was 215 cities. By now it's 225 cities for one. And this 10 liters Leland. At first it was 115 cities. By now it's 130 cities for one. And we have the Luxy, 10 liters. At first it was 100 cities. By now it's 110 cities for one. And we have the 4.5. The 4.5. At first, it was 40 cities. By now, it's 45 cities. We have showed. We have the 20 liters and the 10 liters. The 10 liters, at first, it was 170 cities. But now, it's 190 cities. And for the showed 20 liters, at first, it was 225 cities. By now, it's 350 cities. The roofing sheet, this is the governor's. It's 30 cities. At first it was 25 cities. By now it's 30 cities. And this is for the colored one. At first it was 40 cities. By now it's 45 cities. The plywood, we have the one eight. That one is used for the ceiling. Yeah, it's now 48 cities. At first it was 42 cities. It came to 45 cities. And now it's 48 cities. And we have also the half inch, the half inch plywood. That one to that one. Let's say this is the half inch plywood. This is the half inch plywood. It's 120 cities. At first it was 110 cities, but now it's 120 cities. Yeah.
just like foodstuffs, building materials has also seen an increase. So if you're planning to start a building or you're already in the process, then you heard it. You need to budget extra to be able to meet your target. For Joy Business, I am Beverly Broom. Uh, let's check uh, what's trending uh, in news as we head out um, on myjoyonline.com forward slash business. More on the finance minister's interview. Finance minister hints of review of free SHS subject to cabinet's approval. There's more from there, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwa. Thanks for watching the marketplace. We'll be back same time next week.